Ah, that was kind of like my best attempt at playing this. Um, so this is the second uh, episode in the introducing series. This is uh, what the company that made it called a Hawaiian mandolin harp for some reason. Um, it is, you know, obviously a kind of a vintage instrument. I don't remember the exact year or years that these were made, but um, definitely somewhere around like the 40s or 50s, if I remember right. Um, I got this for like $50 at an antique store thing, um, which is a pretty good deal considering it's in pretty good shape actually. Uh, so like obviously I can't really play this very well. Um, that was kind of my best attempt. <laughs> uh, and also, it's not in the, you know, the most in tune ever. But, uh, you know, that's just because I'm kind of afraid that the more I tune it, the more likely these strings are going to snap. Because uh, I don't think these have ever been changed. <laughs> um, they definitely don't feel all that new. Um, but anyway... So, what is this thing? Uh, this is essentially, it's kind of like a zither, like a plucked zither. Um, so zithers, you know, they mostly come in this kind of form factor. You have the tuning pegs up here. Um, in just a second, I'll show how that is actually tuned. Uh, you have like a bridge of sorts that goes along here. Um, and then you have the other bridge that's hidden inside this thing right here. Um, so this specific one has, let me see, how many strings does it have? Thirty-two strings. Um, I know, this is riveting stuff. Um, Thirty-two strings. Uh, there are four sets uh, that make up chords. Uh, so those would be from here down. Um, and it actually, it has the names of the notes written along here, which was actually very helpful for me because I, I had no idea how this thing would be tuned. Um, so the first chord is like a C major chord. Uh, it lines it out as C, G, C, E. Um, and so those are like really, you know, pretty close together, uh, probably because they're not really meant to be picked as much as they are like, like strummed. Um, and then the next set of four is, let me see, a G minor seven, I think. Yeah, it looks like a G minor seven or no, okay, no, it's a it's a G seven, G seven. So G G B F. And if you're wondering how I get like the names of the chords, uh, so like for C G C E, um, you'll have your root note, the C, and then you'll have uh, the fifth, the G of your major third, which is the E, and then you also have another root, the C. Um, and then for the other one, G7, G dominant 7, you have your root note, G, another root, G, you have a major third, B, and then you have a minor 7th, F. So that makes up a G dominant 7. And then the next one is an F major. Um, you have your, your root, you have your third, you have your fifth, uh, and then you have your root again. Um, and then it also, it also has a D major chord, which I still don't really understand why they have a D major chord there, because it really doesn't work with the other chords. Um, in the past I've tuned, uh, so the top string is an F sharp. Um, so it's like D, A, D, F sharp, 
um, in the past I've tuned that down to an F to make it a D minor or a D minor, and that seems to work better with the rest of the chords. Cause like if you were to strum or pick through it. just it sounds really like tense and weird um i don't know there there must have been some intention behind it either that or whoever like designed it didn't really know much about music um but either way uh so that's that spicy chord um and then the rest of it is tuned to like a, a c major scale so c b a g f e d c and then that repeats. Oh, and then this part, they also have an F sharp here, but I just tune it to an F. Or, or, there we go. Yeah, so there's two Fs next to each other. It would normally be an F sharp and an F, but like if you were to strum through that, it would sound really horrible because you'd have an F, F sharp, and then a G right next to each other. And actually, you, you'd have an E as well, so it'd be like four half steps, E, F, F sharp, G, which sounds horrible, like strummed through. This way, it just sounds like a big C major chord, um, which sounds a lot better. Uh, let me, just a second, I will show how this thing is too. Um, this I had to buy on Amazon. This is like a zither tuning key um so if you see it, it has like a little it's kind of like a hex wrench type thing or not a hex wrench but like a socket wrench kind of thing uh and you just fit it over one of these pegs and then you turn it i'm not going to do it just because it, it's mostly in tune and i don't want to mess with that um but uh if i remember right it's you turn it like if you're looking at it this way, you would turn it to the um, the right. So um, there's that. And let me see, the company that made this was uh, the A.R. Yendrick and Co. Um, I thought it was a sole distributor. Uh, if you look at it, it says six twenty eight. East 28th Street. Um, and it also says uh, Yendrick's uh, Club Special in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you look, it's honestly really quite beautiful in a very like retro, vintage y kind of way. This is really nice, uh, what I imagine would be called like a rosette around the sound hole. And it has this seal, I guess. I don't know if that's like specific to the company or they just thought that it looked cool. <laughs> Uh, and this is the back of it, it has these little, uh, like legs kind of things. Um, and if you like, look, look at it, there's, you know, some cracks here and there on the back. Um, but it's honestly like the back of it is in really good condition. There's just like one little crack here. Um, and then if you look at the other side, um, I don't know how well it'll show on camera, if at all, but there's a lot of uh, finish checking on it. Okay, you can see it kind of on the edge right here. Um, it's like this like cracking in the finish, which, I mean, on guitar is often seen as a bad thing, but I think it looks quite beautiful, um, especially in this. Uh, now, some of the, the other problems uh, with this, there is like a pretty major crack that's running right down here. Might, yeah, you can kind of see it. Almost looks like a string, but it's not. Um, it's right there. Uh, that's running through the soundboard. And then there's another one that's running through the soundboard on this side, uh, which you can also see. But so far, I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, that's also why I don't really want to mess with the tuning too much because the less like you know constant pressure that I put on it is probably the better. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Um, yeah, that, that's really the only thing I have to say about it. Uh, I have actually found a way to use this um, in a few songs that I've recorded, uh, which, by the way, you know, allowed me to shamelessly plug myself. Uh, oh, that sounds really bad. Pause. Pause. Um, uh, I am releasing a song called Cascade uh, on the 31st of this month, um, and it may or may not use this instrument in it uh, as in addition to guitar. But uh, anyway, I hope this was interesting. Uh, this is one of the more interesting things I, f I feel like that I have in my collection because it is, you know, kind of, you know, it's vintage and kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, if you do check out that song, that'd be cool. Um, like I said, October 31st. Uh, and the next episode of Introducing will be one of those instruments. I don't know yet which one I'll do. Um, peace. Stay corny.